Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Gamecock Central Radio. Gamecock Garnet and Black Spring football game took place this past Saturday. Emerson Phillips here to talk about it with you on Gamecock Central Radio along with Wes Mitchell. Wes, we had the Garnet and Black game, big crowd, 32,000-plus in attendance for a crisp spring Saturday afternoon game. The game was preceded by the alumni game, and it was a fun day, and I'm curious to know what really did we learn about this Gamecock football team. It wasn't 100% live action, West, a lot of plays blown dead early and not full contact. So what did we really learn? Well, I don't know if you can ever really learn a whole heck of a lot from the spring. You know, I think um, a lot of this stuff, probably frankly a little bit overrated as far as, you know, actually going out and, and evaluating what you have in a, in a team, I think, you know. Um, now, I, I do think for individual players and, and sort of, you know, an opportunity, is, it's almost a dress rehearsal for the guys, uh, particularly you're talking about a new staff. Um, as we've talked about often, there, there's change with a new staff, and every staff has a way they want to do things, and every staff has a way they want to practice. Every staff has a way they want to do, um, you know, everything down to off-season uh, conditioning, workouts, uh, pretty much everything you could possibly think of that has anything to do with a football program and a football team, um, each staff has its way of, of doing things. So, you know, I, I think the emphasis from Will Muschamp and his group of assistant coaches on Saturday was sort of an opportunity to go out there and let the guys see what a game day um, is going to be like under this group of coaches. Um, you know, can, can you fully simulate an SEC game day and the the pressure that sort of comes with that obviously not but um you know I, I think this was just sort of the first chance for this group to go out there and, and just sort of get a feel for, for what it's going to be like um you know adjustments at halftime adjustments throughout the game uh the play calling situation that there's so many little details that i think uh most fans never think of that um go into a game day um, for a football team anywhere in the country. So I, I think the spring game was sort of a chance for everybody, top to bottom, coaches, players, uh, equipment guys, um, to sort of have a little rehearsal, um, obviously, before uh, they go into the off season and then, and then into uh, fall camp. First impressions, Wes, the up-tempo, the pace of the offense stood out to me first and foremost. McIlwain started the game at quarterback. Brandon McIlwain, the true freshman out of Pennsylvania, highly regarded uh, freshman, got the start. He's showed good feet, I thought, Wes. You know, his pocket presence was good. He showed an ability to run when things broke down. Passing-wise, it was a lot of short stuff, a lot of dink and dunk, not a lot of vertical passing. But McIlwain clearly showed command, number one, according to Coach Muschamp, and athleticism. So talk about the pace of the offense, Wes, and McIlwain's role in it. And, you know, how might the quarterback race change once Perry Orth comes back, once Lorenzo Nunez comes back, and once Jake Bentley, another freshman, joins the program this summer? Yeah, you know, I think um, obviously not not an ideal situation yet, but um, it, it is a situation where, South Carolina sort of has a chance. They have some pieces to work with, I think. And, you know, I think McElwain, you saw um, a guy that's still obviously sort of feeling his way out as far as the offense goes, but he looked uh, comfortable. He looked confident. Um, I really like his acceleration. He's a guy that's got some quickness um, that can make something happen. And I, I think anytime you're talking about a new offensive scheme, um, you know, that everybody's not going to be on the same page right away. So that there's going to be plays that break down. There's going to be plays where the quarterback has to sort of make something happen. And I think that's something McElwain, uh, with his foot speed, with his quickness, can do. So having that extra element when you're going to possibly have a, a little bit higher rate of busted plays um, help, helps him, I think, a great deal. Now, South Carolina was obviously – um, very, I guess, limited on, on what they did. They didn't show a whole lot offensively or defensively. I know the defense didn't really do much to try to confuse uh, McElwain either, so that, that's something, obviously, that defenses are, are going to do a lot of come this fall with McElwain as a quarterback. But still, uh, you know, first time on that stage, first time playing in the stadium in front of, you know, in front of fans, um, you know, I think you have to say that, that McElwain sort of stepped up and did what he needed to do. And uh, it, it was something you can build off of, I think, is probably the best way to say it. Um, long way to go for the offense. I think they've got to uh, continue to try to find more playmakers. Um, 
you know, I thought Jamari Smith was a guy that uh, this spring maybe showed he could help that, that maybe a guy that wasn't being counted on prior to the spring. So that, that's a positive step as well. But, um, you know, as far as McElwain goes, overall, a, a good spring. And I, I think he goes into the summer uh, session probably feeling better about winning the job than, uh, you know, I, I think he would have said his chances were going into the spring. Questions at the quarterback position. The Gamecocks trying to identify who the number one player might be there. And a lot of new faces in the program. It was McIlwain completing 19 of 26 passes for 169 yards and two touchdowns, a four-yarder and a 12-yarder, both of them going to fellow true freshman receiver Brian Edwards out of Conway. So these young freshmen coming in that enrolled early in January, Wes, contributed in the spring game. It looks like you know these two may well be the future of Gamecock football. McIlwain to Edwards could be a phrase that we hear quite often in the next three or four years. Yeah, you know, I thought um, I thought a lot of the freshmen, you know, had moments. Uh, obviously, Brian Edwards, uh, you know, uh, made some plays, and that's something South Carolina needs. You know, Brian's, uh, you know, probably going to be a day one starter. It looks like so. There, there's an opportunity for him to come in and, and play. Um, you know, I thought on the defensive side, uh, the two freshman defensive linemen, uh, Kobe Smith, the defensive tackle, Kier Thomas, defensive end. I thought those were guys that were pretty disruptive up front and uh, showed they can help this team as well. So, um, you know, when you asked me earlier what, what we learned about the team, um, part of the reason I said that we, you know, that it's hard to answer that is because I think not only are these freshmen that are on campus um, going to be in a position to help the team, but I, I do think you, you'd have to look at um, several newcomers, both uh, the freshman and junior college variety, that, um, you know, I think are going to have to find a way to help the team come this fall. So, you know, no, nobody wants to kind of use that excuse of it's going to be a young team. Uh, people don't like to hear that. But um, with it being sort of a rebuild job, I, I think, uh, you know, you look into the spring and or look into the fall, I should say, and you say, hey, there, there's going to be a lot of freshmen on the field for, for South Carolina. Wes, talk about the ground game a little bit. Not a lot of productivity there, but again, it was not a full contact scrimmage. You know, just not a lot of productivity. The Gamecocks have only produced 2,000-yard backs since the 2000 season, Marcus Lattimore and Mike Davis. So where is South Carolina with the running game, and what are the chances that that improves as more players come into the program this summer and uh, the team heals up a little bit? There are a number of, of veterans that did not play in the spring game on Saturday, West, and I wanted to get you to talk about them too. Uh, Sky Moore and Jonathan Walton, Jordan Diggs, notably on defense. But uh, start with the running game and talk about the importance of improving in that area before the season starts in September. Yeah, you know, I think I think they have to uh, continue to improve that area. I think David Williams is a guy that needs to have a great off season. Um, you know, I, I think this scheme may be a little bit better fit for him than the old one. I think that's the hope anyway. And I I know the uh, the coaching staff is high on David Williams. So they, he's a guy that. Uh, they think can help them and think can, you know, sort of be that number one back. But I also think, um, you know, you've got a guy like A.J. Turner, I, I think, has come um, a little bit out of nowhere as a redshirt freshman. Uh, you know, didn't play last year. I thought he showed some good quickness. Probably never, at, at least at, at his current size, going to be a, uh, you know, 25-carry type back in the SEC. But he does provide a little bit of explosiveness, something extra that's, you know, not on the team otherwise in the – um, back suit. So, you know, I think you look at those two guys as sort of um, the two that exit the spring in, in pretty good shape. Now, uh, does a guy like Rico Daddle need to come in and, and possibly play? You know, I, I think um, Rico probably needs to come in with the mindset of, of trying to bury his head in a playbook and, and get comfortable as quickly as possible because I do think there is uh, going to be plenty of opportunity for a, a young running back to step in and, and play a bunch of snaps for South Carolina this spring or this fall because, you know, if you if you look at that position, it's also one of the most uh, often injured positions uh, on the field, whether it be serious injuries or just guys being banged up. Uh, we always talk about how you need two, um, but really you need, you need two healthy guys. And generally it's hard to keep both those guys completely healthy for an entire season. So a lot of times, you need a third and many times even a fourth um, option as far as guys that can actually go in there and help you. The Black beat the Garnet 35-14 in front of 32,916 on Saturday at williams Bryce Emerson Phillips with Wes Mitchell here on Gamecock Central Radio. Wes, defensively, 
secondary is a major concern, and Coach Muschamp has said that he's going to coach the secondary and the safeties specifically himself, and he is known as a defensive coach, and he's got his work cut out for him. West, this group looking for players, guys that can come in, lay the lumber from the secondary. Uh, we need to point out that a number of these veterans did not play. So talk about, you know, what's going on with the defensive side of the football. Sky Moore did not play. Jonathan Walton did not play. He became a father over the weekend. Jordan Diggs will be back this summer. So th- there are some pieces that were not able to play on Saturday that will be fixtures on the defense along with Bryson Allen Williams, T.J. Holloman, and others. Uh, D-line and secondary safety, specifically West, seem to be the top two concerns on defense right now. Yeah, you know, I think they're in a really good situation at at linebacker. You know, I think they feel good about that. Uh, You know, have some players there, even with Sky Moore and, you know, Jordan Diggs missing. So I think once you add those guys back into the fold, uh, you feel pretty good about linebacker. And, and, you know, long-term, I I think the defensive line, um, you know, I thought they did some – some pretty good things, especially against the run on Saturday. Um, you know, Muschamp has talked about how he's sort of um, comfortable uh, kind of uh, with his staff's ability to dial up, um, you know, pressures and blitzes at, at the right time to try and get some additional uh, pressure on the quarterback. You know, because the first thing, first thing first in all Muschamp defenses is to stop the run. So, um, you know, I think the, the defensive front, is going to be in a position to, to probably do that. They've got some guys that have that ability, I think. Uh, to me, safety, um, probably the probably the biggest concern on the team, um, definitely the biggest concern on the defense. And, you know, I think as South Carolina does get some of these other guys in here and obviously gets a Jamarcus King in who um, is someone who I think is a starter right off the bat at, at some spot in the secondary, that sort of will allow them to, to move guys around. Uh, you obviously, you know, want your best five on the field in the secondary. I say five because they're going to be in that nickel package um, a good portion of the time. And, uh, you know, I, I think you'd probably look at playing one of these cornerbacks potentially at safety. And, uh, you know, D.J. Smith is a kid that's got some talent as well that was not available for the spring game because of uh, surgery on his finger. So he's – um He's not going to, you know, that's not going to hamper him this fall, by all indications. So I think, um, you know, that they've got some guys that could possibly sort of be serviceable there. I think they just have to find the, the best um, mix to get at, to get their best players on the field, and then they have to hope there are no injuries. I think that's going to be the big thing there. You know, I, I think they can find guys to play in those starter roles. I think the biggest question is, um, how, how much depth can they build at safety in, there in the secondary? And I think that's going to be one of the big questions in the fall. All right, injuries already a bit of a concern. A couple of quarterbacks did not play this past weekend. Lorenzo Nunez and Perry Orth both sat out of the spring game due to injuries. And, uh, you know, crowded situation at the quarterback spot. Wes, uh, Connor Mitch, 9 of 16 for 141 yards in a TD. And Michael Skarnickia, 8 of 13 for 99 yards and a touchdown. So, you know, Bentley's coming in, and we got McIlwain with a lot of reps with the first unit uh, in the spring game on Saturday. But how close are we, West, to knowing who the starter might be at QB? I don't think we're very close at all. Um, You know, he wants to keep the – he being Muschamp wants to keep the the competition open for obvious reasons. Um, You know, Nunez didn't really get his uh, fair shot because he got hurt. Um, He's still in the mix. Um, obviously, Jake Bentley comes in very highly regarded, highly talented, talented kid. Um, you know, I, I think I think this quarterback battle is going to go pretty much all the way down to you know to the very end, to um, probably well into fall camp. I think because really at this point it could go any number of different ways. Outstanding, Wes. We appreciate your work. You can read Wes's work here on GamecockCentral.com. We appreciate you, bud. All right, man. We'll talk to you soon. Wrapping up spring ball this past Saturday with the spring game. A black 35-14 to win over to Garnet. Nice day at williams Bryce and an excellent turnout. Wes, before we let you go, it feels like there's a new vibe, a breath of fresh air, if you will, around Gamecock football. Will Muschamp and this new staff have brought that in. The alumni game was a real positive experience and a, I think a great experience for the former players that got to play, and I know that the fans enjoyed seeing these older players out there, so something different, something new for Gamecock football. Yeah, and I, I really can't tell you how many of those players I saw um, during that game uh, walk up to Will Muschamp and shake his hand and, and sort of thank him for, for doing that. So 
I, I think it was something that those guys really uh, just truly appreciated. Um, you know, I, I think any time you have a football program, you want for your former players to feel comfortable coming back. You want them to feel welcomed. And I thought that was a, uh, you know, a, a good job uh, by Muschamp to sort of implement that. And the spring game sort of just had a, um, you know, it was a game involved as well, but it sort of just had like a um, fun family, you know, sort of day at the park, have a good time, um, atmosphere or vibe to it. And I think that's something uh, that can only help South Carolina in the future. And this alumni flag football game, that was Muschamp's idea? Um, as far as I know, um, it was his idea. I think he did something like that at Florida maybe. Um, okay. And I – but I, I know he was uh, instrumental in making sure it got implemented. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I, I, th- I think it was a, a very, very appreciated move by those guys who got to participate. I know Ryan Brewer and a group of other players kind of put the thing together, and I heard Brewer on the radio during the game on Saturday. They interviewed him during the spring game, and he said that uh, they had organized a practice, some of these alumni players, on Monday of last week just to get everybody right. together and talk about how things would go. And he said it was like herding cats. <laughs> but it was a good time, and it was uh, just a feel-good experience, and I feel like there's good energy around the program right now. Muschamp has brought a breath of fresh air with him. Yeah, no doubt. And I know um, they uh, – I think they maybe had some extra medics um, around uh, for the first year of the alumni <laughs> game as well. Because uh, some, some of those guys were still fast, and some of those guys were not, um, from, from what I observed. <laughs> All right, good job as always, Wes. Thank you. All right, man. He's Wes Mitchell, and I'm Emerson Phillips, and this is Gamecock Central Radio. Thanks for joining us for Gamecock Football Talk. <laughs>